For the image to look right in the frame, there are two basic requirements. The image needs both space and balance. To understand the concept of balance, one must understand the term optical centre. The optical centre is a place the eye first sees when looking at an image. This position is slightly above that of the geometric centre and an optical illusion occurs if the image is placed at the geometric centre of the mount, making the top border look larger than that of the bottom, thereby giving too much visual weight to the top. Optical centering provides a remedy for this problem. There are a number of formula whereby one can calculate the optical centre, however the following is a simple graphical method of achieving this. First place the artwork at the top left hand corner of the mount. Second draw lines equidistance between the bottom and the side borders and the edges. Third draw a line from the bottom left hand corner to where the bottom line meets the edge of the mount. And fourth, reposition the image so that the bottom right hand corner uh, is placed at the intersection of the two lines. A general rule is that the ratio of the top to the bottom borders is 9 to 11 or 45% to 55%, a ratio of approximately 1 to 1.22. Many framers operate with default values, for example 70mm for the top and the side borders and 80mm for the bottom. This method is more commonly known as bottom weighting. Let's now consider the golden ratio, a ratio of 1 to 1.618. This dates back to Pythagoras and is considered by many as an aesthetic ideal. By applying the golden ratio to an aperture size of 400mm by 300mm, the overall mount size becomes 648mm by 486mm. Border width, the sides 93mm, the top border 112 millimetres and the bottom border 136 millimetres. I would now like to consider the relationship between frame and mount size. Many UK institutions have differing sets of mount and frame sizes developed in the 19th century and based on the old imperial system. I would like to consider those of the British Museum. Essentially these frame sizes determine the mount size but the calculations are the same. Sides are equal, top and bottom in the ratio of 45 to 55 percent. This is a list of the frame and mount sizes from Half Royal to the British Museum's largest panoramic. Finally, I would like to cover an introduction to a number of single and multi aperture mounts. Please note the diagrams are not necessarily to scale. First, the single aperture. One can note the image and mount sizes along with the calculations on this particular slide. The following two slides show the positioning and the dimensions of the single aperture mount. I have included four different multi aperture situations. The first considers four apertures with the top and the bottom aperture edges aligned. The second with the same four apertures but with their centre lines aligned. The third, three apertures equally spaced on a single centre line. And finally, four apertures, two of which have the same dimension. The top and the side aperture edges are aligned. The centre of the two sets of apertures are central on the largest aperture. Finally, some points that one might consider when designing multi-aperture mounts are detailed on this slide. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope you found it both instructional and enjoyable.